Oh my god, you guys, it is now rumored that Corinne from 90 Fiance is now dating a new man. Oh my god, this is an unbelievable story. It just came out not so long ago, and we must, 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 must give credit to Mommy Says Bad Words on Instagram. She is the one that shared this story. She is apparently had an exclusive link, so we have to give her credit. I'm going to put her link above below this video. Seriously, go give her some love. Check out the article for yourself because she shared a bunch of screenshots. But this is what she actually said. She posted... Boom, right there, that picture of Corinne with a man saying exclusive, meet Jason. Jason is a 43 felon from California who was incarcerated for doing some god-awful stuff to his wife that I am not going to repeat, who has a restraining order on him. That includes the kids that they have. Jason is evidently determined to marry Corinne and gain custody over Pierre, Corinne's oldest son, but not Ethan, her newest son, for some unknown reason. Corinne has been seen going to a hotel with Pierre in the middle of the night and it is just like, what the heck? And she also went on to say this right there, saying Jason went to visit Kentucky in October 2020, and that photo I just shared not so long ago uh, was taken of him and Corinne in a Crown Hotel, and she did share someone else, somewhere else that this was, you know, shared from her from a very, 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 very close inside source because people were asking, what is the proof? What is going on? So it was from an inside source. So I don't know anything about it. I just saw it and wanted to share it with y'all. So, oh my God, I don't even know where to start. The thing is, you know, Paul and Corinne have been a little bit quiet on social media. Paul definitely does kind of post stuff, some stuff kind of with Corinne. He has been posting stuff with her hair because if you don't know, she is going to cosmetology school, but that is what is going on. Do I believe it? Honestly, I would not be shocked whatsoever. Now, we can't say yes or no. That's what mommy, you know, says bad words has to say, but I would not be shocked whatsoever. Ever. Well, guys, comment below what you have to think of that. And before I sign off for the day, there's something we have to talk about because this drama just is never, ever, ever, apparently ever, ever, ever going to stop. And that would be with Jihoon and his whole legal battle situation because now Jihoon, a couple days ago, shared on social media that he just got sent a bail for like $21,000. Okay, actually, I was wrong. It was $28,000. He posted that right there on social media a few days ago saying total $28,000 and then it said GoFundMe $17,000 owed $11,000 and he went down to say all for three months and he said we T Amber she said it was for free and volunteer but she asked for money more than my attorney Joe so confused and he later went on and he shared let's just count these out he shared one two three four five six seven ish six and a half ish pages of um just literally going through all these invoices that his attorney sent him and we can look at them we learned a couple things number one we did now learn after looking at these invoices that the guy charges 250 an hour his attorney i don't I don't think that is an astronomically high amount of money for a lawyer. That's probably what I mean, it's probably what you expect. I look at legal fees like anywhere from like a hundred to two fifty, three hundred is, and it sounds crazy, but that's probably on the lower to medium side. And then three hundred plus is probably on the higher side. So I don't think he's charging an abstract, you know, crown of what word I was even trying to say. But I don't think he was charging a crazy amount of money. The thing I think that's kind of bad is now this is what I don't understand. When they came, when they, they came on my channel. Long Long story short, they being uh, Amanda and the lawyer. They came on my channel and they were both upbeat and happy and, you know, Amanda was volunteering and everything was happy-go-lucky. And then about a week later, all this crap went down. My thing is this. Amanda said that she just, out of the kindness of her own heart, made this GoFundMe and they took the GoFundMe money to pay the lawyer. And she even kind of did actually say, um, I don't want to quote her because I, I could have heard it wrong, but I think she kind of said that they were going to, you know, see it through whatever. And she honestly... I would love, I'm not going to, I'll just tell you guys right now, but I would love to rewatch that interview because I'm pretty sure she said that, that we, that, you know, we all want to see this through. And I was kind of wondering, okay, well, what does that mean, see this through? Because she was, I think she was talking about the lawyer. Like, you know, hey, we only raised, you know, however much money, 17 grand from GoFundMe, PayPal, and, you know, say it's going to be a little extra. We want to see this through. I think she said that, but either way, they got that bill. Jihoon got billed, and I don't know what is going on. So my whole thing is this. You know, it appeared that Amanda made the GoFundMe to help Ji Hoon, but I don't know, did she, you know, hire this guy? And I honestly, it's like I interviewed her, and I, I still don't even know. But my whole point is, 
if she hired the lawyer and then it's like he wasn't sending him a bill, that's the other thing. Was the lawyer sending Ji Hyun a bill on a regular basis so he could keep up with the bills? Because if it was like, you know, all of a sudden overnight, Ji Hyun had no idea what was going on with the money, where the money was going, that is kind of, you know, that is kind of weird because it's like, if he did know where the money was going, he could have called the guy and said, you're fired. He could have said, I don't want to work with you anymore when it was a much, you know, smaller sum of money. So that's the million dollar question. Did Ji Hoon know how much money he was getting charged? If he didn't, then uh, it's not, it's, that's shady. That is fishy. And of course they could debate and sit here. Well, I say they, they could say, hey, we were sending the guy invoices. He wasn't reading them because that's a possibility too. But if they just out of the blue said, hey, Ji Hoon, you raised $17,000 and we only got X amount from GoFundMe. And so it's like, now here's a bill for an extra $11,000 that, you know, I'm not really cool with that. But the interesting thing I want to do with you guys really quick, I don't want to waste too much time, but the cool thing I want to talk about really quick is we can see all all the detailed invoice stuff. And there's kind of some interesting things going on. So we can look at a couple different things and let's just jump right into this. I mean, he was charging him, so he detailed everything. And you know, like the first one, okay, text telephone conference. So that's like real stuff. Document preparation, that's all real stuff. That all makes sense. He goes on a lot, a lot of this stuff is with GoFundMe, talking to GoFundMe, a conference call with GoFundMe, and he is charging for it. He charged $275, $325, which like honestly, if I, yeah, see, I would kind of be annoyed by that because I'm, I'm more of like a DIY kind of guy. And I would, I, if I was Ji Hoon, I would have said, I will just do that, you know, and just, that's a, yeah, I mean, they're just really small, stupid, like, they're not, it's not that, it's not that the guy was like, you know, tying his shoe and saying, okay, I just tied my shoe for an hour. It's like, he was just, okay, he's reviewing documents. He is email corresponding. That was half an hour. That was, so it's like, it's little things added up. It was over three months. I don't think he was totally lying about the hours. I think what might have happened was just the total miscommunication of Jihoon having no idea what was going on. You know, the other thing too is I don't even know where Jihoon's anguish is at half the time. And so it's like, he might not even understood what was going on. They could have told them, hey, we're gonna you know raise the money, but we're gonna charge you more. We don't know what their conversation was. Jihoon obviously asked like he had no idea, but it is just like, it is pretty normal. You know, okay, here's something that's kind of weird. It says, you know, just it's all this stuff. It's just really drafted emails. I drafted an email for Team Ji Hoon regarding a power of attorney with attachments. That was, you know, half an hour and just goes on and on and on. The interesting kind of thing, though, I do have to say, I don't know why he included this, but he did include a couple, I mean, it's a couple of hours. Okay, he has this one thing that he drafted an email for Team Ji Hoon, this thing, and it, it's this non-billable hours. That was five hours. Hours. He billed him nothing. I don't know why. Then he went on a couple different lives, which he billed him nothing. And I was wondering, ooh, I wonder if, if I my name. Oh, my name is on here. Oh my god. That you know what this is like? This is like, you know when you like go look at a yearbook? This is so stupid of me to even say, but it's like when you look at a yearbook and you're kind of scrolling through, you're felt, you know, fibbling around and all of a sudden you go, oh my god, that's my name. Hey, there I am right there. It said, preparation for interview with celeb talk guide, no charge for live interview. Um, an hour and a half. Well, I don't know if it was, but it says preparation. So that, I guess, could be true. So, um, yeah, you know, he just has all these fees. The biggest fee, honestly, is this. It says catalog, video, screenshot, screen recordings, and it really makes no sense. It says office staff, and it's $2,100. So that's what I wonder if that was the fee for this other person he's talking about because he made a comment that this other person, Amber, whoever, I, who I believe is working with his now ex-lawyer, was kind of on the payroll too. So my question is, was that $2,100 going to her because it says office staff. And there actually, there are a couple other office staff. There are, you know, not a ton, but it is some. It says office staff, five or 600, another 600, another 277. And that is basically it. A couple other, actually, no, there's another, another, actually, there's a couple office staff. Because there's, there's another office staff, 600, another office staff, 1190. Um, yeah, so that is basically all I can tell. Very odd situation. I don't know what in God's name is going on. To be completely honest, 
The people I interviewed, they seemed nice. The lawyer seemed nice. Amanda seemed nice. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I found it odd. I will say I hate to be rude to anyone, but I did find it kind of odd that, you know, Amanda said that, hey, me and my team, whoever this team is, we're working seven days a week around the clock. And I called her out for her. I just said, why? Like, why would you want to do that? That just seems so odd that someone that doesn't know Jihoon, you, you know, I, it didn't even sound like she was even really that, you know, friendly with Jihoon. It's like, why are you spending supposedly hours and hours and hours, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, trying to help this guy for free? So I am not saying that they were stealing money or anything like that. The other thing, too, that's just so hilarious is, I, you know, I don't know, but I'm sure Jihoon, they're not going to get the 11 grand from Jihoon because they, they billed him 28 grand. They raised 17 grand. So he owes, he owes 11, but it's like, I'm sure he's going to be sent. I no way he's going to be paying that anytime soon. He's super mad. So they'll probably just drop it and forget about it. But it is just like, it's kind of a crazy deal. But that's the thing about law, man. I don't think the guy, like I said earlier, was he was just tying his shoe and doing nothing. I think he was actually doing this and doing that and typing this out. And, you know, the, the, the time added up. That is that. He should have been invoicing Jihoon probably weekly and filling him in. And if he was doing that, then it's like, so be it. Jihoon should have fired the guy a long time ago. But the way Jihoon's talking is that he had no idea about these invoices. So I have no idea. And a third possible scenario, too, is, you know, honestly, it's like, you know, after he blocked all these people and the whole Jihoon team and he got rid of the lawyer, the lawyer could have just said, hey, I was going to see this thing through. And because Jihoon fired me, now I'm going to send him a bill, which that it's also kind of weird. So I don't know. I don't know what to say. I feel like this is just honestly a bad situation. It, it, it took a bad situation into making it very bad because the situation with him and Devin, that's bad enough. And now it's like, this is even getting worse. So that's all I'm going to say. Not cool. I feel bad for both sides. Hopefully it's not as bad as it seems. They can make a fair resolution and they can both move on with their lives. Well, guys, 90 Day Fiance, Jihoon and his whole drama, they got a lot of it going on. And Paul and Corinne, I mean, geez, 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 geez. If that is true that Corinne has a new man, ugh, after she just had a baby with Paul, that's not going to go down good. But guys, well, I just wanted to say real quick, thank you all so much for watching. I do want to say if you are new to this channel, please hit that like. Hit the follow, the subscribe, the share button. It means the absolute literal world to me. I love you guys all so much. Well, thanks so much for watching. Y'all better stay tuned for many more videos.